Hi, I'm Ryan Tracy, the world's fastest balloon model, also known as Duff the Balloon Ninja. <laughs> So, here is how we tie a balloon. It's really important when we're tying a balloon that we hold it between our finger and our thumb, okay? Nice and tight. If we let it go, some of the air is gonna go out and that's not good for balloon modeling. It's not good for what we want to do, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the end of the balloon and we're gonna wrap it around my finger. And what I do then is I pull the balloon away from my finger. I get the end or the knot of the balloon. I get the end of it push it through, and then I pull on it. Now, it's really important I get my finger out of there. And then what I want to do is hold the knot and pull it really tight. And it's important that I pull that tight, because if I don't pull that really tight, what happens is the air leaks out. So if I make a nice balloon model and the air is leaking out, it's going to shrink really, really quickly, which is not good. We want our balloon models to be good and strong. We want them to be durable and last a little time. So whenever we have our balloon and it's nice and pumped up and we've tied it off, it's important to understand how long is left at the end of the balloon. This end of the balloon I like to call the tail or the uninflated section and this end of the balloon I like to call the tip. Whenever we balloon model, we always start balloon modeling at the tip of the balloon. And the way I like to teach people how to find the tip of the balloon is just to do that with the balloon and hear that noise and know that that's where you start, okay? Now, this end of the balloon, I have left around four fingers in the uninflated tail. It's very important when you're making a balloon model to understand the amount of tail that you have. I have here about four fingers of a tail, which is really good if I'm making something like, say for example, a dog. So you can see when I've made this dog really quickly that I've used almost the entirety of the balloon and I don't have a big long uninflated tail section and also I don't have a tail that has got too much air and it's at risk of popping. Another example is if I have this balloon which is fully inflated and I make something simple say like a basic sword. You can see very quickly when I make that that the end of the balloon is fully inflated there's no tail there. If I'm making something more complicated say like a monkey or a giraffe and I need lots of bubbles, lots of twists, then I leave the tail with a lot longer uh, of a tail. If you want to become one of the world's fastest balloon modelers, why not get my kit, the Great Inflate. It has everything you need to help you start to become a balloon modeler. Now, if you like that content, why not hit the subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.